اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 35 سورة البقرة آیا 261 تو 266 مثل الذین ينفقون اموالهم فی سبیل اللہ The example of those people who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah. The example of who? Those people who spend in the way of Allah. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have learned several verses which encourage spending in the way of Allah. For example, right at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, we learned about the mu'minun, the muttaqun, those people who have taqwa. What do they do? وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ Yunfiqun. Whatever that we have given them, what do they do from it? They spend it in the way of Allah. Then in the second juz, almost towards the beginning, we learned the ayatul bir. That the true bir, the true righteousness is of the one who وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ The one who spends his wealth in the way of Allah despite his immense love for that wealth. He still spends his wealth in the way of Allah. Similarly, we read in Surah Al-Baqarah that وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا تَهْلُكَ Spend in the way of Allah and do not throw yourselves for destruction. Because if you don't spend, then what are you going to do? You're going to suffer. You're going to harm yourself. Also we learned that يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ They ask you about what they should spend. What was the response? قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ Spend on who? On your parents. And we also learned after that that they ask about what they should spend. Spend what? That which is al-af, that which is extra. So we see that thus far there has been a lot of encouragement on spending in the way of Allah. So much so that even the verses that we learned about divorce, that when a woman is being divorced and when she is being sent away, then yes, she keeps the mahr, whatever her situation is, But despite that, give her what? On top of that, give her a mata'ah. So our deen teaches us to be those people who spend on others. Not be those who are selfish and who only want benefits for themselves. But to be caring for those people who are around us and bring benefit to them. Then we learned at the beginning of the third juz that يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Anfiqu. The clear command was given. Clearly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers that spend before your time is up. Spend before death comes to you. Because once your chance is over, then that's it. Even if you want to give the entire earth's fill in charity, it's not going to benefit you. So make use of your life, make use of your wealth as long as you have it. So obviously when there was so much encouragement and when the clear commands were given that spend in the way of Allah, obviously people wonder, what's the reward? What's the benefit? Why should we spend? We're giving our money away. What do we get in return? Previously we learned, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Okay, fine, you give a loan to Allah, but what's the reward? What's the benefit? What do I get in return? So we see, That in the following verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the reward for spending in His way. What is the reward? What is the benefit? Is it just one good deed? Or is the good deed, the good reward multiplied many, many times? Similarly, in the following verses, we are also taught about the proper etiquette of spending. That it's not just about cutting a check. It's not just about throwing a few cents in the box. Or giving some cash. No. How should you spend? What's the proper manner? What's the proper etiquette? When you spend, how should you do so? And when you have spent, then what should your behavior be? So, after all that encouragement and the clear command, now the verses tell us about the etiquette of spending, the manner of spending, the reward for spending, and also who exactly should we spend on. On which ways should we spend our wealth? مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله The example of those people who spend their wealth 
Where? Fi sabilillah In the way of Allah Amwalahum is the plural of mal And the word mal is from the root letters Meem wa ulam And mal includes everything that a person owns Everything that a person possesses Whether he is using them personally Or it is something that is in his name Or it is something that he has invested Whether it is his assets or investments Every single thing that a person owns What does Allah say? Those who spend their own wealth So what does it mean? They don't steal other people's wealth And they give it in charity No What do they do? They spend their own money Their own things Because if you think of it What is it that you like? What is it that you love? Something that you own Or something that belongs to another person? Something that you own yourself For example if you go in the shoe area There are lots of shoes over there Some shoes are in a very bad condition And other shoes are in a very good condition For example Some shoes are very expensive And other shoes are normal But which shoes do you like? Your own Right? Your own Even if it is something that is not as valuable Even if it is something that is not of great Value or great amount Even if it is not something that's very expensive But what you own is what you love So therefore They spend of their own money Of their own wealth Of the things that they love most But where do they spend it? Just on themselves? No Over here in particular fi sabilillah, In the way of Allah What's the way of Allah? The deen of Allah And why is it called Sabilillah, why is it called the way of Allah? For two reasons. Because first of all, it is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for His servants. It is the way of life, it is the way of living that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. He has legislated for who? For His servants. Also it is called way of Allah because it is the way that takes a person to who? To the pleasure of Allah, to the approval of Allah. A person cannot invent his own ways He cannot make up his own ways And think that he will please Allah through them A person only pleases Allah how? By doing something in the manner, in the way That Allah likes That Allah approves of So they spend their wealth in the way of Allah Now what does it mean by Infaq fi sabilillah What does it mean by Spending in the way of Allah This includes several things that first of all, when a person spends, he spends it for the pleasure of Allah. He spends it to attain the approval of Allah. Remember that when we spend, there could be different intentions. For example, a person spends why? To make another person happy. Similarly, a person is very poor, he's very hungry, and you give them money or you give them food, why? Because they're hungry. You feel compassionate. You feel sorry for them You feel bad for them So in order to benefit the poor person What do you do? You give them money But the best intention The best reason for spending is what? That I am giving this Why? To please Allah That even if apparently you're giving the money to a poor person To a person who is very hungry Why are you caring for him? Why are you so concerned about him? Because if you fulfill his need if you take care of him, who is going to be happy? Allah is going to be happy. It's possible that you give him money and he doesn't even say thank you to you. It's possible. But when you've given it for the sake of Allah, when you've given it to attain the pleasure of Allah, then you don't care about who you're giving to and what you're giving and what their response is and what people say and what people don't say. So the best intention is the intention lillah. So in fact, fi sabilillah includes spending to attain the pleasure of Allah, first of all. Secondly, it includes spending for the deen of Allah. Spending for the success of the deen of Allah. The development, the promotion, the propagation of the deen of Allah. What does that include? Spending to support the deen of Allah, to spread the deen of Allah. To promote the deen of Allah What does that include? To build masajid To help support a masjid Pay the monthly bills 
to help with their religious publications, like for example books, cards, lecture CDs, websites. There's so many things that are involved, right? Many times when we look at Islamic material, what do we say? It's of such poor quality. Don't we say that? And we compare it to different institutes or universities or centers and we say, you know, Islamic material is not up to standard. Why? Because either we're not spending to support it or we're not working to support it, to make it. What else is included? For example, that a person spends his money. Why? So that he can learn about the deen. He can educate himself about the deen. Or for example, he spends on students of knowledge so that they can learn the deen. So spending in the promotion of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To educate the people about Islam, to support some da'wah work in publishing materials, distributing free books, giving books to students of knowledge. All of this is what? Spending in the way of Allah. Thirdly, spending in the way of Allah includes spending in all acts of obedience. So for example, when a person gives zakat, what is he doing? He's obeying Allah. He's fulfilling an obligation. Similarly, when a person spends on his children, on his spouse, on his parents, on his relatives, why? Because they're needy or for whatever reason, when he spends on his family, his relatives, his friends, why? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as it is an act of obedience to Allah, then this is included in fi sabilillah. So when a person spends in the way of Allah, he spends to please Allah. He spends to support the deen of Allah. He spends in obedience to Allah. Then what is the example of such a person? Allah says, Kamathali. It is like the example of. Like the example of what? Habbatin. Of a grain. The word habba is from ha, ba, ba. And the word habba is used for grain, a seed, and it can also be used for a wheat grain. And remember that the word habba is used for the grain until it is buried in the earth. Once it is buried in the earth, then the word habba is not used for it anymore. Once it starts growing, then it's not habba anymore. Because it changes its form. Okay, So habba is the whole grain that you see. As soon as it sprouts, as soon as a plant comes out of it, then the word habba will not be used for it. So the example of such people is that of a habba. So the example of a believer, the one who spends is the example of a person who sows a seed. It is the example of a farmer. Just imagine somebody sowing a seed. Somebody burying a seed in the soil, in the ground. Why does he do that? So that the plant can grow. If he keeps a grain in a Ziploc bag, in his drawer, what's going to happen to the grain? Is a plant going to grow from it? No. If he keeps it safe in his wallet, is something going to grow from it? No. It will probably dehydrate. So, a habba is a small grain. And the example of those people who spend in the way of Allah is like the one who sows a seed. And when he sows the seed, what happens? Ambatat. It grew. What grew? The seed grew. Ambatat is from the root letters noon bata. And the word nabd is used for growing, for sprouting. The word nabat is used for plants. So what grew? Sab'a, seven. Sanabila, stalks, ears. The word sanabil is the plural of sumbula. And sumbula is from the root letter seen, noon, ba, na. The word sumbula is used for a spike, basically a spike of grain, an ear of grain. If you've ever seen a crop, for example, of wheat, what is it like? There's a stalk, there's a stem, and at the end of the stem, at the end of the stalk, you have a cluster of the grain seeds. Isn't it? So you have the stalk, and at the end of the stalk, at the tip of the stalk, you have a cluster 
of the grains. You have a cluster of seeds. So sumbula is used for the cluster of seeds. It is the seeds, it is the grains which are at the tip, at the end of a stalk. You understand what a sumbula is now? And it's a cluster. It's not just one grain, it's not just two grains. It's usually like 50, 60, sometimes less, sometimes more. Okay, sometimes 20, sometimes 15. It can be different in number. So over here Allah says, أَمْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلْ This one seed, one grain, one habba that is buried in the earth, what happens? Seven stalks come out of it. And at the end of each stalk is a cluster of seeds, is a cluster of grains. How many grains are there in each cluster? How many grains are there at the end of each sumbula? Fi kulli sumbulatin mi'atu habba. In every sumbula, there are a hundred grains. So just imagine, the farmer puts in only one seed. What happens? Seven stalks come out of that. At the end of each stalk, there are a hundred grains each. So, one times seven times one hundred. How much is it? Seven hundred. A person puts in only one penny, one cent, one dollar. And Allah multiplies the reward so much so that He gets the reward of spending seven hundred dollars. One habba turns into seven hundred habba. This is the example of the reward of those people who spend in the way of Allah. And remember that 700 is not the limit. 700 is not the maximum. What does Allah say? وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah increases, He multiplies for whoever He wills. Multiplies what? Multiplies the reward. It's not just a hundred in each cluster. It could be more. It's not just seven stocks. It could be more. وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah increases the reward for whomsoever He wills. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is infinitely vast and He is also always all-knowing. The name of Allah, Wasir, is from Wasin Ain, from the word Wusr. What does Wusr mean? Capacity. And Wasir is used for one who has a lot of Wusr. He is Dhu Sa'ah. So Allah is very vast. How? In what? In all of His attributes. In all of His attributes. In His knowledge, He is not limited. He is Wasir. He is Wasir. In His Qudra, in His ability, He doesn't have limited abilities. He is wasir in his qudra. Similarly in his rahmah, he is not just rahim, but he is ar-rahman. In his maghfira, he is not just ghafoor, but who is he? Ghaffar. So Allah is wasir in all of his attributes. And he is also alim. He also has knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge that is wasir. Knowledge that is very vast. So what does that mean? That his knowledge includes everything. His knowledge includes everything. It is not just limited to the present or to the past or to the future. It includes all times, all places, everybody. So we see in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the reward for a person when he spends in the way of Allah. And this multiplication of reward, an example has been given off up to 700 times. But remember, it's not just 700 times. It can be more than that as well. What determines the multiplication of reward? The purity of a person's intention and the purity of a person's wealth. How sincere is he? And what is he spending in the way of Allah? Remember we learned earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tayyib and he only accepts that which is tayyib. And when you spend that which is tayyib, Allah accepts it. And when he accepts it with his right hand, what does he do? He looks after it until... One date grows into the size of a mountain. What does that mean? That the reward is multiplied to such an extent. So we see over here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the reward for good deeds. Especially when a person spends in the way of Allah. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim in which the Prophet wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whenever my bondsman, meaning whenever my slave, intends to do good, 
but he does not do it. He intends to do something good, but he's not able to do it afterwards. I write one good deed for him. But if he puts it into practice, if he actually does it after making the intention, then I write from 10 to 700 good deeds in his favor. As soon as a person makes the intention, what happens? He gets the reward. But when he actually does it, then the reward is multiplied from 10 to 700 times in the favor of this person. And we see that Allah is wasir and He is also alim. That He can give a lot of reward. He has a lot of wus'ah. He is very vast. Wasi'a kursiyahu samawati wal ard. It's not difficult for Him to reward. It's very easy for Him to reward. And He is knowing. He knows about the intention of the person who is giving. So He is wasir and He is also alim. So we see that an example is being given. Let's analyze this example. Let's reflect on this example. First of all, why is an example given? Why? So that we can understand a concept. Something that is abstract, something that is intangible, we cannot really picture. When an example is given, then we can picture it. It becomes real for us. It becomes tangible for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 43, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ And these examples we present to the people, but none will understand them except those of knowledge. So a person has to be of the knowledgeable ones to be able to understand the examples. So whatever knowledge that you have, use it in order to understand the example. So we see that this example shows us several things. That when a person puts one seed in the ground, in the soil, what happens? That seed grows into a plant and one seed that he sows brings him multiple seeds similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grows the good deeds for those people who perform the good deeds many times when we're doing something we think this is such an insignificant or such a small action what benefit can it bring but we don't know you do something very small But with the ripple effect, the benefit can be immense. You don't know where or how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make that action grow and bring great benefit. So we see that the good deeds of a person, when they're sincere, when they're done for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them grow. Just as He makes a plant grow for a farmer. If He can make a plant grow, can He not make your good deeds grow? Of course He can. We learn from a hadith that is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, He who gives in charity the value of a date, which he legally earned, it's completely halal. And Allah accepts only that which is pure. What happens? Allah accepts it with his right hand. And he fosters it for him, as one of you fosters his foal, until it becomes like a mountain. So Allah makes good deeds grow. We learn of a person that a person once gave away a camel in the way of Allah a camel just as a person would give away a car today so he gave away his camel in the way of Allah the Prophet ﷺ said to him that on the day of resurrection you will have 700 camels you will have 700 camels can you afford 700 cars but maybe we can afford one car maybe we can afford one camel So when a person gives one thing for the sake of Allah, Allah grows the reward for it. Allah multiplies the reward for it. Also we see in this example that performing a good deed, performing an action is like sowing a seed. When a person sows a seed, what is he doing? He is burying the seed where? In the ground under the soil it's hidden it's not going to be seen anymore and apparently what has a person done he has thrown his wealth away he has destroyed his wealth I mean you bury things that are dead you bury things that are not useful anymore that are not needed anymore for example garbage how do they dispose it sometimes they throw it in lakes other times they dig deep ditches and then they throw garbage in it. 
So things that are not needed generally, we put those under the ground. People when they die, then they are buried. But when a person sows a seed, then it is as though he is wasting his money. But actually, what is he doing? He is investing. And in order to invest your money, you have to give it away. You have to separate yourself from the money. Because if you just keep it with yourself, it's not going to grow. Only when you give it away, then it's going to grow. When a person spends from his wealth, apparently he's lost it. When you put a hundred dollars, when you put a fifty dollar bill in the box, apparently it's gone. Isn't it? You'll probably never see it again. But actually what are you doing? You're investing it. And it's possible that you don't see the results today. You don't see the benefits now. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. As long as the intention is sincere. But you have to do something. You have to give it away. Also we see from this example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very just. And He does not waste the effort of anyone. The actions that we do, the sadaqah that we give, sometimes it doesn't return to us in its original form. You give $50 away, you give $100 away, you give a camel away. It's not with you anymore. But Allah is just and He gives a reward. He multiplies a reward. And sometimes it's given in the dunya, but definitely it will be given in the akhirah. Also we see from this example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the quality and not just the quantity. What is the example of? Habbah. One small tiny grain. One grain. But because it is given with sincerity, it is of the pure wealth that a person owns. When he gives even one habba, one grain for the sake of Allah, because of its quality, that one habba even is appreciated. So much so that the reward for it is multiplied 700 times. Many times we wonder, five cents, what difference is it going to make? This is just change. And sometimes change is just lying around in our house. It's just wasting away. Sometimes it's just floating in your wallet. Floating in your car. But if you spend it in the way of Allah, that one cent that's been lying around for so long, that change that bothers you so much, it could bring you so much reward in the hereafter. Remember, it's not just the quantity, it's also the quality. And if everybody gives only one cent, if a hundred people give one cent, how much does that make? A dollar. If a thousand people give one cent, how much does that make? Ten dollars. And if you give one cent and Allah multiplies it 700 times, how much is that? It's as if you gave seven dollars. So don't belittle even the smallest of charity. Even if it's just one habba, one grain. Also we see from this example, person reaps exactly what he has sown. You reap what you sow. If you put a habba in the ground, what are you going to get? A plant. If you put a plastic bead in the ground, what are you going to get? Nothing. Have you lost a plastic bead? Yes. So you reap what you sow, what you give. If it's of good quality, if the habba is of good quality, your plant is also going to be of good quality. If it's of poor quality, the plant is also going to be of poor quality. So it's the intention as well that matters. We also see that when a person sows a seed, when he puts the grain in the soil, can he just forget about it? Can he just forget about it and expect that, oh, it's going to grow into a beautiful plant one day and I'm going to have so much? Can he just expect that? No. What does he have to do? He has to take care. He has to put the fertilizer. He has to make sure that the plant gets enough sunlight, the plant gets enough water, and only then will the plant grow properly. Similarly, once we have given sadaqah, what do we have to do? We have to protect and preserve the reward. A good deed, a good action must be followed by good actions. Otherwise, the bad actions, what are they going to do? They're going to nullify the reward of the good actions. When you plant a seed, when you put a seed in the ground, 
it's possible that a lot of weeds also grow. And if you don't take those weeds out, what's going to happen? Your plant is eventually going to die. So, protecting and guarding the sadaqa from being wasted is also very important. And we see over here that in particular, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ has been mentioned. Those who spend where? In the way of Allah. On the propagation of the deen. So we see that there is more reward in spending where? To support the deen of Allah than on spending on individuals or just on yourself or just on your family. When a person spends in the way of Allah, that spending brings him more reward. If you think of it, when you spend on a person, for example, your mother, your sister, your friend, you get instant reward. For example, a smile on their face, a thank you letter, a thank you note, a call, something or the other, and you get instant reward, you get instant gratification. But when you spend in the way of Allah, for example, you drop something in the box, you put something in the box, who's going to say thank you to you? People are not going to come and say thank you to you. But on the Day of Judgment, that one thing that you gave in the way of Allah, the reward for it is going to be multiplied. That reward is going to be 700 times more and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase it as much as He wills. So spending in the way of Allah is much better than spending in other causes. We learn from a hadith which is mentioned in Ibn Majah. The Prophet wasallam said that whoever sent wealth to be spent in the way of Allah and stayed behind himself. Whoever sponsored, whoever spent his money, why? To support the deen of Allah. And himself he stays behind, meaning he doesn't actively participate in supporting the deen of Allah. What's the reward for this person? He will be rewarded for every dirham that he spends, the reward of 700 dirham. This is a reward for who? The person who only spends, but does not actively participate. And whoever fought himself for Allah's pleasure and also spent his wealth in this cause. So what does it mean? That he's not just spending the money, but he is also participating actively himself. It's not just his money, but it his time, his energy, his efforts, his talents. Then what's the reward for him? He will be rewarded for every dirham, the reward of 700 thousand dirhams 700,000 dirham and a person who only gives money how much does he get? 700 but the person who gives money and time and effort how much does he get? 700,000 so whenever you have to spend in the way of Allah and that means spending on yourself as well sometimes and putting in your time as well for example coming to the school you have to pay the fees. You have to pay for the ride. Some of you have to pay for the residence. Then you have to pay for the books. I mean, one book after the other, one course after the other. Every month you have to buy books. So when you have to spend, one dollar brings how much? 700,000. Can you ever make that much money yourself? In one day? In one and a half years? But when you spend in the way of Allah... This is the reward. Not just your money, but your effort and your time. When you spend for the propagation of the deen, then what are you doing? You're not just benefiting yourself. You're also benefiting mankind. You're also benefiting the people around you. Therefore, the reward is more. This is why Allah says, Wallahu wasi'un alim. Allah is vast. He has a lot of reward to give. How much do you want? How much do you want? So it's up to you. How much ever reward you want, do the math and spend in the way of Allah. So there are many lessons that we learn from this ayah. We learned in the previous ayahs that Allah is the wali of who? Alladina amanu. That He is their caretaker. He is the one who cares for them. He is the one who provides for them. He is the one who rewards them for their efforts. So when a person spends in the way of Allah, this is the reward that he gets. And if he spends for the taghut, what is he going to get? How much can they give? Nothing. We see from this ayah, we learn from this ayah about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That how merciful he is. How kind he is. You give one habba, 
He give one thing in his way and he multiplies a reward so many times. So many more times. Sometimes we spend only a little bit in the way of Allah and we cut the reward immediately in this dunya even. That is much more than what we have spent. We learn of the mercy of Allah again that Allah is the one who has given us everything. And if we give it in His way, then He is promising us more reward in return. Much more benefit in return. Sometimes to get Islamic education, to educate ourselves, to educate our children about the deen, sometimes we have to spend a lot of money. You go to an institute and they ask you for a fees and you wonder, this is the deen of Allah. And it's interesting how they say, what's the hadiyah for this? Hadiyah is actually a gift. So anyway... When a person has to spend his money to learn about the deen, to educate his family about the deen, then if he remembers this ayah, that everything that I'm spending, I'm getting reward for it. It's like an investment whose benefits I will see later. Because when you're putting the seed in the ground, instantly you don't see any benefit. But after some time, then you get the benefit. It takes an entire season for the plant to come forth. For you to get the grains in your hand It takes a long time So similarly When you're investing It might take time But the benefit will come gives us a lot of reward He doesn't need our money It's just an excuse for us to earn as much as reward we want Subhanallah The video was really amazing So there is nothing else to say after it And this Subhanallah When we read There is so much Lesson to learn and just we have to open our mind and it says, Wallahu wasun alim, he is wasya, he is giving us, he is giving us this knowledge also. So whatever we are doing is for ourselves actually. Exactly. And the part about Wallahu Wasi or Alim, Allah is vast and He is also knowing. About the knowledge of Allah, we learn from Surah Al An'am, Ayah fifty nine, that Wama Taskutumi Warakatin illa Yalamuha. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابِ مُبِينٍ Not a leaf falls, but he knows of it. A leaf. Even when it falls, he knows of it. So when you give even a scent in the way of Allah, he knows of it. And no grain is there within the darkness of the earth. Some sadaqah that you give in the darkness of the night, when nobody is watching you, and no moist or dry thing, but that it is written in a clear record. He is wasir, he can give a lot of reward, and he is alim, he knows exactly what you're giving. So there are many lessons that can be learned from this ayah. First of all, we see that مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ That a person must spend from his own wealth in the way of Allah. Sometimes we see that women, they spend from who? From their husband's wealth. Why? Because their husband is the one who is making the money. And she's not the one who's earning. So what does she do? She spends from her husband's wealth. Obviously, if there is mutual understanding between the two, it's all right. But if you think of it, women also, they own their jewelry, which is probably much more money than what their husbands have in the bank. So when a person spends of his own money, of his own possessions, then that is what brings more reward. Also we learn from this ayah that a person must spend in the way of Allah, not in haram places. That spending brings reward. Spending in incorrect ways is not what brings reward to a person. Sometimes we see that people want to support the deen or they want to spread Islamic knowledge. And what do they do? They forward emails that have information that is not authentic. Somebody sent an email and at the end they say, forward, forward. And you're like, okay, forward to my entire mailing list. And you spam other people's mailboxes. And remember, before forwarding any email, look at the evidence. Is there any evidence that is given? If there is evidence, then only forward it. If there isn't, then there is no point. And you will be asked if you spread something wrong as well. So a person should spend in ways that are halal, when he's spending or when he's doing something to promote the deen of Allah, then he should promote authentic Islamic knowledge. Sometimes we see people are distributing books or cards or material that is not authentic. Always, whenever you have to spread anything like that, make sure that it is authentic. When a person spends in the way of Allah, 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just reward him for what he has spent, but he also rewards him for his intention of spending. From the hadith that I mentioned to you, that when a person intends to do something good, Allah writes a good deed for him, one good deed. When he actually does it, then there is more reward. When you intend to give a gift to someone, will they know about it? When you only think of it in your mind, does a person know that you're thinking of giving them a gift? No. And let's say you don't end up giving it to them. Are they going to thank you for it? No. But when you intend to give something in the way of Allah, just for your intention, you get the reward. Also we see that when a person spends in the way of Allah, then he must keep the conditions of spending in mind as well. That sometimes when we read these verses, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّ Everything I spend can be multiplied 700 times. What do we think of? That I should give everything of mine away. Sometimes we think like that. For example, I mentioned to you about your jewelry. and It's possible that some people think, I'm going to give all my jewelry away. So, when a person spends in the way of Allah, he should remember the proper manner of spending. And what is that proper manner? That a person should spend in moderation. We learn in Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 67, that, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا And those who, when they spend, do so not excessively. Nor sparingly Meaning They don't spend everything Nor are they miserly That they don't spend anything But what is their way? Their way is of moderation Between the two Between what? Between being extravagant And between being stingy We learned earlier That al-af Whatever That you can give comfortably Whatever that you can give and you will not become dependent on others, then you can give that in the way of Allah. Because it is fi sabirillah, it is in obedience to Allah. Like for example, if a person spends in the way of Allah, he gives sadaqa. Why? Because one of the benefits of sadaqa is that sadaqa averts calamity. So when he gives sadaqa, so that the benefit can be that it averts calamity, what is that? He is spending in obedience to Allah. He's not making up his own way. That only if I slaughter a black cow or a black goat, then this difficulty is going to be averted from me. If he does that, that would be incorrect. But if he's spending anything, any sadaqah, as long as it is in obedience to Allah, reward is the same. You have to preserve your sadaqah afterwards as well. One very important lesson that we learn from this ayah is that a person must spend in the way of Allah. We spend on many things. We spend on ourselves. We spend on our children, our food, eating out, clothes, shopping, luxury, similarly, on a vacation. We spend on so many things. But over here, spending in the way of Allah, to support the deen of Allah. That is what brings most reward. We learn about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. How much they would spend in the way of Allah. Uthman anhu, he gave 1,000 camels. 1,000 dinars. When? At the time of the book. Also we learn about so many other companions. Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, what did he do? He spent half of his money, half of everything that he earned, everything that he possessed. Abu Bakr, what did he do? He took everything. There are levels of ihsan. So we see that we have to spend for the deen of Allah, to support the deen of Allah. Look at what we spend on ourselves. And look at what we spend for the deen of Allah. Just compare. How much is it that I spend on myself every week, every month? And how much is it that I spend on the deen of Allah every year? How much? Just do the comparison. Because when we spend for the deen of Allah, then it will bring reward then it will bring more reward. Let's listen to the recitation of this ayah. ثُمَّ لَا يُتْبِعُونَ Then they do not follow. مَا أَنْفَقُوا That which they have spent. They do not follow it with what? مَنَّن With reminders of it. وَلَا أَذَى Nor injury. We see that when a person spends in the way of Allah, or when a person hears this, the reward for spending in the way of Allah. What does he do? He makes the intention for spending in the way of Allah. 
In this ayah, the etiquette of spending has been taught. That when you spend, when you have spent in the way of Allah, then what is it that you should avoid? What is it that you must stay away from? Because if you don't stay away from it, what is it going to do? It's going to destroy your sadaqah. Just as for example, when you plant a seed, when you sow a seed, what happens? The plant grows, and along with the plant, what else grows? Weeds. What do you have to do? You have to get rid of the weeds. Because if you don't, they're going to destroy your plant. So over here, Allah is warning us that these things you have to stay away from. Because if you don't, they're going to ruin your sadaqah. So those who spend in the way of Allah, for the sake of Allah, and then, لا يتبعون يتبعون is from تبع اتبع which is to follow an action with another. To do one thing after another. So what's the first action they did? Spending in the way of Allah. So what is the second action that they don't do? That they don't follow that spending with man or other. The word mannan is from the root letters meme, noon, noon. And the word man is used for favor, for a benefit that a person gives to another. And remember that the word man literally means to cut something, to cut something off. Why is man called man? Because when a person gives a favor to another, when a person shows favor to another, what is he doing? He's cutting his need off. He's cutting his dependence off. Or sometimes when a person bestows a huge favor upon the other, what is he doing? He's cutting off his tongue. That the person who is benefiting cannot say a thing to him. Isn't it so? The person who is on the receiving end, no matter how much injustice is being done against him, sometimes he can't say a word. Why? Because it's ingratitude then. So man literally means to cut off and man is used for favor. And remember that man is of two types. First of all, it is man bil fair. It is to show favor to someone. How? Through one's action. Which is to bestow a favor on someone. And it is in particular used for a favor that is very huge. That is big. That is endless. For example, Allah says, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Mamnoon is from man as well. Meaning it's an ajr that is never going to be cut off. It's endless. It's huge. It's immense. Also we read in the Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ Allah has bestowed a huge favor upon the believers. How? When He sent amongst them a messenger. So man, first of all, is through action, which is to show favor to someone, to give something to another that is of benefit to them. Secondly, the word man is man bil qawl, which is to mention to another the favor that you have done to him. The favor that you have Show it to him. That for example, a person gives money to another. Or a person sponsors someone. And what does he say? Look, I spent this much on you. And what are you doing? I gave you this much and you never said thank you to me. I sent you food. Did you like it? I didn't hear anything. I didn't get any response. This is what? Man. To talk about the favor that you've bestowed on the other in order to remind them in order to make them feel bad in order to show off so man is to remind the other of the favor that you've shown to them and remember that this man could be through tongue that a person says such statements and sometimes it can also be through attitude through a person's behavior the way that a person deals with another that he belittles him or he considers him less. It could be directly and it could also be indirectly. For example, it could be directly talking to him, I gave you this much. You should listen to me. Or it could be indirectly that a person talks to other people. I gave her so much. I spend on her every Eid, every year, every month and this is what she does to me. She doesn't even listen to me. So man could be directly and it could also be indirectly. And remember that man can be towards people towards the faqir, towards the one who is needy. And some people have the audacity to do man towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when they spend in the way of Allah, they think as if they're showing a favor to Allah. They think as if they're doing a favor to the deen of Allah by spending on the deen of Allah. 
Which is why when they spend on the deen of Allah, what do they want? They want some benefit in return. They want some appreciation in return. They want something or the other in return. Why? Because it is as though they are showing a favor to Allah. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا We learn about the hypocrites that they show favor to you, O Prophet ﷺ, that they have become Muslim. That the hypocrites consider that just because they are Muslim, they have done a huge favor to you. But the fact is when a person spends in the deen of Allah, who is he benefiting? Himself. We learned earlier, وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ That spend in the way of Allah and do not throw yourselves for destruction. Because if you don't spend in the way of Allah, what are you doing? You're harming yourself. You're not showing a favor to Allah. So what's the etiquette? That when a person spends in the way of Allah, he should not follow that spending with man. وَلَا أَذَى Nor any injury. What is أَذَى? أَذَى is a hurt, an injury that is inflicted upon who? A living being. It could be physical and it could also be emotional. It's a discomfort suffered by the badan or the ruh. So what is أَذَى? For example, that a person spends on the faqir, on the poor person, and after giving him the money, what does he do? He humiliates him in front of others. He reminds him, he mentions what he has done, and as a result, he hurts the poor person. ثُمَّ لَا يُتْبِعُونَ مَا أَنْفَقُوا مَنًّا وَلَا أَذَى Give me examples of man and ada. For example, sometimes we spend on somebody and we want some benefit in return. For example, there is a particular person and you like them. You want to be friends with them. I'm talking about same gender. So you want to be friends with them, you go to the same school and you learn that they passed a test. What do you do? You give them a gift. Hmm? Or you greet them or you call them over. Hmm? You say, come over to my house. So what are you doing? You're spending on them. You have a party in your house, you invite them. What are you doing? You're spending in return. Now you want something in return from them. For example, that they should also call you over. They should also give you their notes or share their assignment with you. And when they don't, you tell them or you tell somebody else, you know, I invited her to my house. She came over three times already and she cannot even do this much for me. And sometimes we actually do this. That we expect some kind of benefit from those people whom we have spent in some way or the other. And when they don't meet our standard, when they don't benefit us in return, then we remind them. Or we humiliate them in public. Or we say something to them that gives them adha, that hurts them. So when these people, when they spend in the way of Allah, they don't follow that spending by man nor by adha. And for adha, for example, a person reminds the faqir about what he has spent upon him. Or he says such remarks that you're always asking. You're always begging. You're always in need. I gave you this much. For example, if a masjid is having you know, some fundraiser, a person says they're always having fundraisers. Without realizing the fact that you're always coming to the masjid. <laughs> right? So when these statements are said, when people make such statements, what happens? It hurts people. It's other. Or for example... A person mentions to others about the sadaqah that he has given. Someone confides in you and they tell you that they are in need. And you spend something on them. You give them something. You give them a pair of clothes. You give them their money. You give them money for the food. And you mention it to their friends. Or you mention it to other people. Is it going to hurt them? Is it going to hurt the poor person? Is it going to hurt the needy person? Of course it's going to. Remember that when you're giving to someone, Allah has given you the opportunity. Allah has given you the tawfiq. And you should be thankful for that opportunity. And boasting at this time or hurting the other person is not the way of the believer. So these people, when they spend in the way of Allah, they don't follow it by man or other. Allah says, لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ For them, they have their reward with their Lord. 
They have their reward secure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the word inda, indiya, gives a meaning of being with someone in place. Being with someone in place, first of all. It has other meanings as well, but first of all, in place. So what does it mean by that? That the reward is with Allah. It is secure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when will they get their reward? In the hereafter. Because we learned that Jannah al-Firdaus, the highest level of Jannah, it is below the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is with Allah, very close to Allah. Also, indiya, being with, gives a meaning of that it is secure with someone, that it is definitely going to come from them. So it is with Allah, meaning Allah Himself, He will definitely reward them. Because it is preserved with Him, it is secure with Him. Just imagine, you know, children, when they have something that they really like, and when they're afraid that somebody's going to take it, what do they do? They go up to their moms and they say, Can you please keep it for me? Keep it safe for me. So it is with Allah, it is secure with Allah. They're definitely going to get it. And also remember that when this is mentioned that it is in the in the Allah, in the Rabbihim, what does it mean? That the reward is huge. The reward is very immense. Just as the dua that Abu Bakr anhu was taught, فَغْفِرْ لِي مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ عِنْدِكْ Forgive me with forgiveness that is from you. Why? Because forgiveness that is from you is going to be huge. It is going to be immense. So similarly, the reward that comes from Allah is going to be huge. It's going to be immense. No one can give that same reward. لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ For them, there is reward with their Lord. وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And they will have no fear, nor will they have any regrets. They will have no fear. Fear of what? Fear of losing what they have. When you have something, when you have your jewelry, when you have your house, when you have your clothes, when you have your books, when you have your possessions, what fear do you have all the time? You might lose it. Somebody might steal it. Which is why people have insurance and they have this and they have that. To make sure that if for some reason they end up losing it or something happens to what they love, something happens to what they own, it can be replaced. This is the fear that we have. The more we have, the more fear we have. Isn't it? The more we have, the more fear we have. But when you have deposited what you have at a very secure place, immortalizing it, then will you have any fear? You won't have any fear. So similarly, when you have something, as long as you have it, you will be worried. But once you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is secure. And you won't have any fears anymore. Any fear of losing it. You will be content that it's secure. It's safe. I've sent it ahead for myself. So when a person spends in the way of Allah, his fears are eliminated. That when a person gives his wealth away, he is worried about if it's going to come back to him. For example, even when you're putting your money in the bank, if you're putting your jewelry in the locker or something, what fear do you have? What if something happens? What if something happens? Which is why people go to such lengths to secure what they own, to preserve what they own. But when you have deposited with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no fear. Because, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلَ If Allah has said that He is going to give the reward, who is more truthful than Him? He is going to give it. He is going to definitely give you the reward for it. Also we see that when a person spends, he has another fear. What is that? Fear of poverty. Fear of poverty. That if I give this away, then I will have less. I will not have enough. For example, if you have a sandwich for your lunch, and the person next to you does not have anything, you want to share it with them. But what fear do you have? What if I'm still hungry? Right? It's a natural fear. We have that fear. I still might be thirsty. I still might be hungry. This is the fear that we have when we spend in the way of Allah. But when a person spends in the way of Allah, with sincerity, with conviction, then he is sure that Allah will take care of me. Allah is the one who is going to take care of me. So if I give it, 
Allah will recompense me somehow or the other. And sometimes you may have seen that you give half of your lunch away and somebody brings you something much more. Something that you weren't even thinking. Something that you couldn't even imagine. Somebody brings you lunch to take home with you. So, there is going to be no fear upon them. What does Allah say? وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Nor will they grieve. Nor will they have any regrets. Now what are some of the regrets that people have when it comes to money? That for example, once they have spent, they have the regret of spending. I should not have spent that. Or they miss what they have spent, what they have given away. Sometimes when you're very emotional, you're like, okay, let me just give this away. Let me just give this away as well. I don't need it. It's awful. It's extra. Let me give it away. And then all of a sudden you realize, you need that thing. But if you have given it for the sake of Allah, what do you think? It's okay. Yes, I need it. Allah will give me. So, لَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ They will not have any worries. Allah will take care of them. Also, we see that a person has grief when he loses what he loves. When he has it, he is afraid. I might lose it. When he loses it, he is grieved. He feels sorrow that I've lost it. It's been taken away from me. But when a person gives it away himself, when you make the decision yourself to give it away, then he does not have that feeling of loss. For example, if you give a piece of your jewelry or some money that you own, yourself, in the way of Allah, that makes you feel very happy. But if that same piece of jewelry or an equivalent amount is stolen and you can't find it, how do you feel? How do you feel? A sense of loss. But when you've given it in the way of Allah yourself, then you don't have that sense of loss. And more specifically, over here, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون refers to their state in the akhirah. Yes, in the dunya you see these benefits, that when a person gives something away, then he does not have fear, and he does not have any regrets. But specifically, in the akhirah, in the hereafter, this person will have no regrets, and he will have no fears. Why? Because he will get much more. He gave only a habba. And now he gets 700. Why would he have any fear? Why would he have any grief? Any sorrow? He is not going to have any fear or any grief. We learn in Surah Al-Fajr, يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ اِرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً to the righteous it will be said at the time of death that O oh, reassured soul return to your Lord well pleased and pleasing to Him لا خوف and no grief either let's listen to the recitation الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا Neither speak to on the day of judgment, nor will he look at them, nor will he purify them. Walahum adabun alim, and for them is a painful punishment. Who are these people? Allah is neither going to speak to them, nor is he going to look at them, nor is he going to purify them, and for them is a painful punishment. Who are they? First of all, Al-Mannanu Bima A'ta. Al-Mannan. Who is Mannan? The one who reminds the other of the favor that he has bestowed upon the other. The one who reminds. And then we also learn from the hadith that the second person is the one who drags his lower garment on the ground. Why? Out of arrogance. On the ground. He deliberately wears long clothes. Why? So that they drag behind him. Because it's a sign of arrogance. And also, the third person is that the one who sells goods by false oaths. The one who sells something how? By false oaths. That he says, yes, it came in fresh today. And he swears by Allah. Why? Just so that he can sell. What's the punishment? Allah will not even look at such people. Who? The one who reminds the other of what he has given to him. It is something so disliked by Allah. What does Allah say? قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ Good word. Kind speech. What is ma'roof? That which is acceptable to the aql, to the people. 
to the culture, to the society, and also, most importantly, to the religion of Allah. Appropriate word, kind word, acceptable words. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ And also forgiveness. They are what? They are khayrun. They are much better than what? مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ Than a charity. يَتْبَعُهَا أَذَى That is followed by أَذَى That is followed by injury. Now you may wonder only Ada is mentioned over here, man is not mentioned. But the fact is that Ada includes man. When a person is reminded of a favor that he has been shown, then it hurts him. So Allah says over here that kind speech, qawlun ma'roof wa maghfira. They are much better than a sadaqah that is followed by Ada. Why? Because a sadaqah that is followed by Ada, it's wasted. And qawlun ma'roof wa maghfira, if you do that, it's much better. Now what does qawlu ma'roof refer to? We see that sometimes a person comes to you and they ask you for something. But you don't have anything to give them. You yourself are needy. You cannot give them. Or even if you can give them, at that particular time, you don't have anything. For example, you open up your wallet, you open your bag, and you can't find anything that you can give. You have your cards, you just don't have any cash. So in this situation, if a person is asking, what should you do? Just ignore them and give them a rude look or say to them, stop asking me. I'm sorry you cannot help in a very rude way. No. What should a person say? Qawlu ma'roof. He should excuse himself. How? Very gently. We learn from Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 28, وَإِمَّا تُعْرِضَنَّ عَنْهُمْ إِبْتِغَاءَ رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكْ تَرْجُوهَا فَقُلْ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَيْسُورًا And if you must turn away from the needy, awaiting mercy from your Lord, which you expect, then speak to them a gentle word. If you have to refuse, then how should you refuse? Not harshly, not rudely, but gently, kindly, in a kind manner. Excuse yourself politely. But we see that the Prophet ﷺ, he never refused. We learn from a hadith that is mentioned in both Bukhari and Muslim. Jabir said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was not asked for anything at all to which he said no. And we might think that oh, the Prophet ﷺ was perhaps very, very rich. He had a lot of money. We know that at the Battle of Trench, Khandaq, the Prophet ﷺ had two rocks died to his stomach because of hunger. The Prophet ﷺ, he would not say no to anybody. We learned once that of a man, he saw the Prophet ﷺ wearing something very beautiful, a very beautiful garment. And he said, this is so beautiful, please give it to me. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ did? He gave it to him. And if somebody asks us, we're like, the Prophet ﷺ never refused. He never said no. Sometimes, okay, you cannot give a lot. But maybe you can say qawlun ma'roof. Because a good word is also a sadaqah. A good word is also a charity. Then Allah says, wa maghfira, and also forgiveness. Now what does it mean by forgiveness? Sometimes you say very nicely, I'm sorry, I do not have anything right now, I cannot give you, but maybe I can give you another time. But what does a person say? He continues with his story. And he's like, no, you give me now. He's very persistent. Sometimes you happen to be in a masjid and they begin a fundraiser, for example. And you get very upset. Sometimes it upsets you. You've been there to pray salah. And the fundraiser is going on and on and on. So at that time, Allah says, maghfira, forgiveness. It's okay. Just let it go. Maghfira, forgiveness. So forgiveness for what? Forgiveness for their asking you repeatedly for their being very persistent in asking you. Or for asking you more than they should. They should ask for only a little bit. What are they doing? You give a little bit and they say more. You give more and they say more. So when a person keeps on asking, how do you feel? Very upset. And then you're like, I should just say something to him now. Or sometimes what happens? The other person, he's asking very rudely. That also upsets us. What does Allah say? Maghfirah. Sometimes they take and then they're very rude. After taking, what does Allah say? Maghfirah. It's better to say a good word and forgiving than giving a sadaqah and following it by adha, 
what would other be? That for example, a person is very persistent in asking and you finally give them, you're like, now be quiet, don't ask anything and you hurt their feelings. That sadaqah is not as good as just a qawlu ma'roof on its own. It's better to not spend if a person is going to follow that charity by other. And if a person is not able to spend, then he should at least say qawlu ma'roof. And he should forgive the person who is asking. We learn from a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim that there is a sadaqah due on every Muslim. Every Muslim must give sadaqah. If he cannot give because he has no money, then let him work so that he can support himself and then give charity. Sometimes you say, I don't have. What can I give? What did the Prophet say? Work, make money, and spend that. If he is unable to work, he is unable to work, he cannot work. For example, you're a woman. You have children. You can't work. Your husband doesn't allow. It's not appropriate for you to work. Then what should he do? Then let him help someone in need of his help. Helping another is also sadaqah. If he does not do that, then let him command that which is good. What should he do? If he cannot help someone, she's very tired, she's very exhausted at the end of the day, then what should she do? She should command that which is good. Tell other people about that which is right. If he does not do that, then he should not do evil or harm others. He should stay away from disobeying Allah. He should stay away from harming others. And if he does that, if he stays away from harming other people, then even that will be written for him as a sadaqah. قَوْلٌ ma'roof wa maghfiratun. Sometimes when we read these verses, we're like, I don't have much to give. What can I give? First of all, we see even a habba is valuable. And even if you can't afford that, then qawlu ma'roof, maghfira, that is better. Wallahu ghaniyun halim. And Allah is free of want, and He is also most forbearing. He is very tolerant. Why does Allah say this over here? That Allah is ghani. He doesn't need your charity. That after giving your charity, you're reminding the people about what you've given them. Allah is ghani. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need your charity. If He wanted, He could have given everybody what they need, what they want. Isn't it so? If He has given to us, He could give it to them. But He gave more to some and less to others. Why? So that those who have more have the opportunity to spend, to earn some reward. Allah is ghani. He doesn't need you. But He has provided you with an opportunity to spend. So when you spend, don't follow it by other. Don't follow it by man. Don't think yourself as very rich or very wealthy or very generous. No, it's a tawfiq that Allah has given you. We learn from a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, O son of Adam, spend and I will spend on you. What does Allah say? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah said that O son of Adam, spend and I will spend on you. Allah is ghani. He is rich. He can give you. And he is also Halim. Who is Halim? The one who does not punish immediately. The one who does not call to account immediately. We see that sometimes when we give sadaqah, we follow our sadaqah by man and other. Sometimes we don't say it, but we think of it in our mind. Sometimes we follow it by other. Or sometimes our behavior after spending is not appropriate. We think ourselves as very generous. We think of ourselves as very righteous. And I'm so nice. I helped that person. I gave 10% of my money. But Allah is halim that despite your arrogance and despite your man and other, Allah does not catch you immediately. Allah does not punish immediately. And also halim over here is relevant because sometimes we spend money, we give sadaqah, and what happens? We don't know exactly where it has gone. But Allah is halim, meaning when you give for His sake, with the right intention, in the right manner, with wealth that is pure, then Allah will reward you for it. We all know about the hadith about the man who, once he said that, I'm going to give sadaqah at night. And what did he do? He ended up giving sadaqah to who? A prostitute. Next night he ended up giving sadaqah to a thief. And then to a rich person. What was he told? That it's possible that your sadaqah prevented that prostitute from doing that which is haram. Prevented the thief from stealing. And encouraged the rich man to give. So we don't know where our sadaqah is going. That about man and other, 
that once we have given something in the way of Allah, we should forget about it. It's like give and forget. That you give in such a manner that your left hand doesn't know what the right hand gave. That even you don't realize what exactly you give. How much is it that you give? Sometimes people immediately start doing the math. Okay, I'm giving this much money, it's 10% and I'm going to take out this much money. Let's listen to the recitation. قول معروف ومغفرة خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى والله غني حسن So maghfira over here also means that covering the poverty of the poor person and not disclosing it to others. That is better than a sadaqa that is followed by adha. Wallahu ghaniyun halim. It's as though Allah is telling us, I don't need your sadaqah. If you're going to follow it by man and adha, you're wasting your reward. And it's better for you to say something that is kind and to forgive other people. Sometimes we think that goodness is only in spending money. And then we can say whatever we want, we can do whatever we want. But the fact is that if a person does sadaqah and he follows it by bad actions, what is he doing? He's nullifying the sadaqah. Instead of wasting his money, what should he do? He should focus on qawlu ma'roof, improving his akhlaq and maghfira, forgiving other people. Sometimes when we're giving sadaqah to another, we think that we have so much and we can give and the other person he doesn't have anything and then we try to control them or we try to say things to them which are inappropriate. And we forget that it's possible that the tables may turn in the future. You may have heard of stories in which people who were rich, now they are begging. And the beggars who were begging yesterday, now they are the ones who are giving. All of us have heard stories about that. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who have believed. al amanu are being addressed. And the address is with Ya. Yeah. So pay attention, O believers. And listen to this carefully because it is either something very important that Allah is commanding you of or he is forbidding you from something that you must stay away from so therefore listen to this attentively لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم do not nullify your charities do not waste your sadaqat تبطلوا is from باطلام from the word باطل and the word باطل is used for falsehood. And ibtal is to nullify something, to make something invalid. Something is done, and then it's wiped off. So la tubutilu sadaqatikum. And sadaqat is a plural of sadaqah. Do not make your charities worthless. Meaning, do not make the reward of your charity worthless. Do not waste the reward of your charity. How? Bil manni, by doing man, by reminding others of your generosity, wal adha, and by hurting those whom you have spent upon. Either by kalam, by speech, or otherwise. Because if a person does man or adha after giving sadaqah, then what is he doing? He is wasting the reward of his sadaqah. Which is why in the previous ayah we learned that qawlu ma'roof wa maghfira they are better than a sadaqah that is followed by adha. It's better to not give sadaqah if you're going to follow it by adha. Because when a person gives sadaqah and he follows it by adha, what is he doing? He's wasting that sadaqah. So he's losing that wealth and he's also losing the reward. So over here Allah tells us do not waste the reward of your sadaqat by man and other. Kalladi, like the one who, like the one who wastes the reward of his sadaqah. Who is he? Yunfiqu malahu, he spends his wealth. Why? Ri'a annas, to show off to the people, to be seen by people. The word ri'a is from the root letters ra, hamza, ya. Ri'a is also a word which is to show off, and ri'a is also to show off. Basically it is from ru'ya. And ru'ya means to see. So ri'a is to do something so that it is seen by people. It is an action that is done. Why? Only so that it is seen by other people. It is to show off. 
eye service. This is eye service. Just to do an action so that the eyes of people are satisfied. And sometimes the eye is used for showing something, projecting something that is contrary to reality. So do not waste your sadaqah just like the one who spends his wealth. Why? Only to show off to the people. Or when he spends his wealth in sadaqah, at the same time what is he doing? He is showing off. Who is this person? This person is a munafiq, is a hypocrite. Because we learn about the hypocrites, that they are the ones who do all acts of righteousness. Why? Only to satisfy the eyes of others. Only to show off to others. Why? Because when a person shows off, when a person gives sadaqah to show off, what is he showing? That he has a lot of wealth. That he is very generous. That he is very kind to others. We learn in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 38, وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ رِئَاءَ النَّاسِ And those people who spend their wealth, why? To be seen by the people. Also we learn in Surah An-Nisa, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَى When they stand for prayer, the hypocrites, how do they stand? Lazily. And why do they stand in prayer then? Just to show off to the people. When they pray salah, when they give sadaqah, what's the niyyah? just to show off to the people. So Allah warns us over here that do not spend like the hypocrites because their spending does not bring them any benefit. It wastes their wealth. Now the question is, what is included in showing off? Or what is meant by showing off when it comes to sadaqah? For example, when a person gives sadaqah, he only gives it in public so that other people can see it. Or for example, when he gives it, after giving it, he mentions it to other people. Why? So that he is praised for it. So that he is appreciated for it. I gave this much money to so and so. I sent food to such and such person. Why? So that he is being praised. And also sometimes, people show off to establish their superiority, their supremacy over others. Because when a person is giving, when he is the giving hand, then obviously the upper hand is better than the lower hand. So when a person is telling others, he is showing to others that he is giving, what is he doing? He is establishing his supremacy. He is establishing his superiority over others. Can you think of some examples? For example, if somebody is asking again, you say, I gave this much yesterday and so the people who are around they find out that you gave before and now you're giving again what else is included in showing off to the people sometimes you know in our casual conversations in our casual conversations we mention about what we have given and what we did and what we said and how we were generous and what happens is that when we mention it to other people sometimes our niya is very good we're not showing off but then afterwards she didn't praise me she didn't say anything to me. An hour niya changes afterwards. And sometimes you may have wondered that you start doing something good and you mention it to someone and you never get the tawfiq to do it again. Because when we mention, at that time our niya is good. And immediately after, it changes. So ri'a an nas showing off to the people when giving sadaqah wastes the sadaqah, wastes the reward of the sadaqah. So Allah warns us over here that do not waste your sadaqah like the munafiq who gives sadaqah and he wastes the reward for it. Because when a person is giving for the sake of showing off, he's not giving it for the sake of Allah. He's not looking for the reward. If he was really looking for the reward, he would hide that deed. He would protect that deed. He wouldn't tell anybody about it. وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Nor does he believe in Allah and the last day. We know about the hypocrites, about the munafiqun. We learned earlier in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ But in reality, they're not believers. So they don't believe in Allah and the last day. Because if they really believed in Allah and the last day, then they would give sadaqah with the right intention. Not to show off to the people. فَمَثَلُهُ So his example. Whose example? Of the one who spends in order to show off to the people. كَمَثَلِ صَفْوَانٍ Is like a smooth, hard rock. 
The word Safwan is a plural of Safwana with a time buta at the end. And it's from the root letter Sad, Fa, Waw. And Safwan is used for a rock or a boulder that is very huge. And the surface of this rock is very smooth. You know, some rocks, they're very rough, but some other rocks are very smooth, especially if you go by the lake. So over there in particular, you find rocks that are very smooth. The surface is very, very soft and smooth. So Safwan is used for a huge rock that is also smooth. So the example of the sadaqah of this person is like that of a stone that is very smooth. عَلَيْهِ تُرَابٌ Upon it is dust. Meaning on the surface of the rock is a layer of fine dust. Now sometimes when rocks are covered with dust or sometimes soil, what happens? If the dust is not washed away, eventually what happens? Sometimes plants actually grow over there. You will see tiny, tiny plants. Sometimes you see them. But what happens to this rock? فَأَصَابَهُ وَابِلُونَ Heavy rain reaches it. أَصَابَهُ From صَاد well ba. And you know about the word isaba? It is to hit the target, to reach where one must reach, where something is decreed to reach. So أَصَابَهُ وَابِلٌ A wabil hits the rock. The word wabil is from wabalam. And the word wabil is used when a horse runs a lot or when a horse eagerly pursues something without getting tired. It just keeps going on and on and on. And wabil is used for a heavy rain that is also continuous. And it's also used for heavy rain with huge or big raindrops. So فَأَصَابَهُ وَابِلُونَ Just imagine, a heavy downpour falls down, a heavy rain falls down, intense rain upon this rock. What's going to happen to that rock? The soil, the dust is going to be washed away. So Allah says فَتَرَكَهُ So it left it. The rain left the rock. صَلْدَ barren. The word salda is from sad lam dal. And sald is used for something that is very hard and tough and smooth on which nothing grows. It's used for something that is barren and dry. It's also used for something that is lifeless. It is said, salad as sail, meaning he turned away the beggar without giving him anything. Nothing came out of him. The beggar, the sail came asking, requesting, and nothing changed the man, nothing affected him, nothing moved him. Salda he was dead and barren. Nothing changed him. So salda is something from which nothing issues forth. Nothing grows out of it. So the rock is covered with dust. And what happens? Heavy rain comes. And what does the rain do? It washes away all of that dust. Leaving the rock barren. This is the example of the one who spends in order to show off. That temporarily, for some time, Something grows. He does something good. There is a layer of dust. And maybe on that layer of dust, there is some plants that are growing. But then, there is heavy rain. Maybe somebody says something nasty. Maybe somebody does not appreciate. And what happens? All of that sadaqah is wasted. Or when he does man, when he does riya, what does that do? That riya, that showing off, it washes away the good deed completely. And this is what happens to the person who does a good deed in order to show off. That he gets no benefit for it. He gets no reward for it. لا يقدرون على شيء مما كسبوا They have no power over anything of what they have earned. ما كسبوا What is ما كسبوا? That which they have earned. Now if you think of it, when somebody gives sadaqah, they should get some reward for it. That's what we learned. When you give sadaqah, you get reward. So ma kasabu refers to reward. But Allah says they have no power, no ability, nothing over what they should have earned. Meaning, all of that reward has been washed away. Just as the dust that covers the stone, once it has been washed away, can you go collect that dust again? Can you? No. It's been washed away. And especially if the rain is continuous, if it's just pouring down and the rain is just falling down, the water is just flowing, can you collect that dust again? No, you can't. Similarly, when a person does riya, he washes away his good deeds and he has no ability over it anymore. 
he cannot have it with himself on the day of judgment and therefore there is no reward for him for the sadaqah that he gives wallahu la yahdi alqaum alkafirin and allah does not guide those people who disbelieve those people who disbelieve over here in particular refers to those who do riya allah does not guide them he does not give them any reward for their efforts so we see that in this ayah it has been emphasized that those people who give sadaqah to show off they don't actually believe in allah in the last day wala yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir because when a person does something for allah when he gives sadaqah with sincerity what does he have in mind the pleasure of allah and the reward in the hereafter but if he gives it to show off to the people that obviously he's not thinking about the reward he's not thinking about the pleasure of allah so such a person does not actually believe in allah or the last day now there are many lessons that can be learned from this ayah first of all we learn about the mercy of allah that he addresses the believers and he tells them about what could waste their charity la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha sometimes this is so common sometimes we see children doing this that they give something and they come and tell their mothers or they come and tell everybody they announce they want appreciation because obviously anything and everything that they've done in life they've always heard a wow or a good or a good job so even when they give sadaqa they want appreciation and sometimes it is really out of innocence but it's allah's mercy that he's telling us don't waste your sadaqa we also learn from this ayah that man adha and showing off three things man adha and riya what do they do they waste they completely nullify a person's sadaqa to such an extent that he will have absolutely no reward for it on the day of judgment it's like fine dust that has been washed away by heavy rain you have no power over it nothing at all now the question is that why does a person give sadaqa to show off why what's the problem the weakness of faith weakness of iman because if a person realizes that allah is going to give me the reward people even if they praise me what can they give me how much really can they give me if the focus is on the reward of allah is on the pleasure of allah if the iman is strong then a person does not do riya and about riya we all have to remember that riya is a shirkul asghar it is minor shirk because what is shirk associating a partner with allah when you do a good deed you do it for the sake of allah so that he gives you the reward so that he is happy but if a person gives sadaqa so that allah is happy or so that people are happy people give reward what is that that is also associating partners so this is minor shirk it is shirk al asghar and what did we learn that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that ana i am the one one who does not stand in need of a partner i do not need any partner and i told you about the hadith earlier that when a person does something for the sake of allah and also for the sake of others and that deed allah doesn't accept it allah is pure and he accepts only that which is pure then allah says wa mathalu alladhina yunfiquna amwalahum and the example of those people who spend their wealth why do they spend their wealth ibtigha amardatillah to seek the pleasure of allah mardat is a plural of marda so those who spend in order to seek the pleasure of allah what's the root of mardat ra dad yeah it's not mim ra dad because it's from rida pleasure so why do they spend what's their niya it's not to show off but their niya is to please allah to make allah happy what else is their niya with tathbita min anfusihim and assuring reward for themselves the word tathbit is from tha ba ta you have done the word earlier wa thabbit aqdamana what does thabat mean to make something firm to stabilize something to fix something to be steadfast so tathbitan is confirmation strengthening stabilization of what min anfusihim from themselves what does it mean by this tasbita min anfusihim is understood as li ajli tasbit 
meaning for the purpose of tathbit meaning they spend in order to keep their hearts steadfast upon iman they spend why tathbitan for the purpose of stabilization strengthening strengthening stabilizing what their hearts upon iman to gain that confidence in iman because remember that when a person does a righteous deed obviously what does it do it grows him in his goodness in his iman and when a person commits sins what happens a black dot appears on his heart and he continues in sin so tathbita min anfusihim what does it mean to keep their heart steadfast upon iman then tathbita min anfusihim has also been understood as that they spend while they are sure and certain tathbit gives the meaning of certainty what certainty that allah will definitely reward them for their sadaqa they spend with that confidence that i am giving it for the sake of allah and allah is going to reward me i'm not giving it for these people so no matter what they say i don't care whatever they say whatever they don't say i don't care i am giving it for the sake of allah so when a person spends with the conviction with the certainty that allah is going to reward me and this shows us another thing that when you do give sadaqa then be confident about the promise of allah don't be shaky be confident and the more confidence you have the more able you will be to give sadaqa just as for example we learn about fasting and praying that man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban that whoever fasts ramadan with faith and expectation of what of reward so similarly they give sadaqa with what with that confidence with that certainty that allah will give reward so why do they give sadaqa for two reasons what are the two reasons ibtigha amradatillah to gain the pleasure of allah and secondly to get tasbeet min anfusihim min anfusihim is very important because nobody else is forcing them to give sadaqa it's themselves min anfusihim from themselves tasbeet min anfusihim so their example is of what kamathali jannati is like that of a garden and this garden is situated where this orchard is situated bi rabwatin on a high ground rabwa is from ra ba wa and raba yarbu literally means to grow to swell to increase the word riba is from the same root as well interest because it's the money that grows and rabwa is used for an elevated land a high ground so a garden that is situated on a high ground on an elevated land high land on a hill and this garden what happens to it asabaha wabilun the same heavy rain reaches it what's the difference between this and the previous example that was fine layer of dust on a smooth rock that was the soil fine layer of dust what happened to it it got washed away with the heavy rain the same word wabil is used and this one this garden is situated on a hill upland so it's very stable it has a firm ground fa'atat ukulaha dhi'fain the same rain fell upon it and what happened it produced its ukul its fruit its produce how many times dhi'fain twice double produce double fruit compared to another garden now the question is why does it give double produce why because the soil is good the niya is good the intention is different the hypocrite who was mentioned in the previous ayah the other person why does he spend to show off to the people there is no stability in his action one comment one negative remark and that's it everything is gone she didn't thank me she didn't praise me she hurt my feelings i'm never giving anything again everything washed away but over here the same rain comes and what happens more sadaqa there fain double sadaqa like we learn about abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu we know about his daughter aisha radhiyallahu anha the wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when she was accused one of his relatives was someone who had accused her as well 
what happened? Initially, he said he was not going to give anything to him anymore because he used to financially support that relative. And afterwards, what did he do? He increased in his financial support. آتت أكلها ضعفين More صدقة comes out. There is more benefit. More produce. Why? Because the land is different. Now, what has been mentioned in this ayah is that the garden is situated on a high land. Now, is there really a difference if a garden is situated in an upland in a higher place compared to a garden that is situated on low ground? Yes, there is a difference. We know about upland farming, highland farming. It's much better. Brings much more produce compared to farming that is done on other land. Why? Because first of all, the soil is good. It does not get flooded with rain. Nor is it too dry. There is nothing preventing it from sunlight. And also, there is plenty of rain. And if there is no rain, then there is enough moisture. Compared to just that fine layer of soil on the dust. It's washed away. But Allah says, فَإِلَّمْ يُصِبُهَا وَابِلُونَ And even if a heavy rain does not reach it, فَطَلُّنْ Then a drizzle. Meaning then a drizzle is also enough. طَلْ is from the root letters طَالَمْ لَمْ And طَلْ is used for fine rain, for a very light rain, thin raindrops, drizzle. فَطَلْ Meaning then even a little drizzle is enough. A little sadaqa is even enough. It suffices it. Why? The niyyah is good. The intention is good. Still, the produce will be good. So we see that a person who gives sadaqa with sincerity, even if he cannot give a lot, but Allah knows his intention, then he is still going to get reward. So at the end of the day, it's not just the quantity that matters. What is it that's important? The quality, the niyyah, the intention. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And Allah is seeing of what you do. Meaning He watches all of your actions. He knows your situation. He knows how much you can give and what is it that you are giving. Let's listen to the recitation. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَذَا كَالَّذِي يُنْفِقُ مَا لَهُ رِئَاءٌ Opportunity he has. He gives it. Whether it is just a qal or a wabil. A little or a lot. Sometimes we wait for the perfect time. Or for the perfect state. But... The person who is sincere, who wants to give for the sake of Allah, he doesn't care about how much it is or how much he can afford or how much he cannot afford. He gives whatever that he can. And the second way of understanding this ayah is that a person who spends sincerely for the sake of Allah, whatever he has spent, whether it is a little or a lot, he will get immense reward for his sadaqah. Why? Because of his sincerity. Because of his intention. Sometimes a person can give a lot. He is giving millions. But because his intention is not good, therefore it doesn't bring reward. But sometimes it is just one habba. And what happens to it? It turns into 700. And Allah can increase more than that for whomsoever He wills. And remember, Allah is watching. And He's not just watching the outward. He is watching the heart as well. The state of the heart as well. Next ayah. Then Allah says, أَيَوَدُّ أَحَدُكُمْ Would one of you like? يَوَدُّ is from the root letters well, دَال, دَال. And what or would means to love something, to like something. And remember that would is the intense form of hub. Hub is also to love. But would is خالص الحب. It is pure love. So would any one of you like Meaning none of you would like this. This is istifham for the purpose of inkar, for denial. Would any of you like an takuna lahu jannah? That he has a garden. He has an orchard. And this orchard that he has is his sole means of acquiring livelihood. And this garden that he has, it is of min nakhilin. It is of date palms. Wa arnabin and grapevines. Nakhil is a plural of nakhla, which is a date palm. And arnab is a plural of inab, which is used for grapes as well as grapevines. So he has a garden of date palms and grapevines. And as for irrigation, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Rivers flow from underneath it. Underneath what? Underneath the trees of this garden. Meaning itself irrigated. 
لَهُ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ ثَمَرَاتِ And this person, the owner of this garden, he has فِيهَا in this garden مِنْ كُلِّ ثَمَرَاتِ every type of fruit. What does it mean by this? كُلِّ ثَمَرَاتِ Meaning different varieties. He has grapes and he also has dates. And كُلِّ ثَمَرَاتِ is also understood as that he has fruit throughout the year. Throughout the year. He has produce coming from this garden. So an example is given of a person who has a garden, a beautiful orchard that has date palms, that has grapes, there is water and there is a lot of variety of the produce. Just as a man who has spent a lot of time giving sadaqah, doing good deeds and he has acquired thamarat, a variety of good deeds. But this person wa asabahu al-kibar Old age reaches him Meaning he has become very old now Kibar is from Kaf Bara It is used for greatness For old age Over here in particular it means old age So he has become very old And if he has become very old If something happens to the garden Does he have time to fix it? Does he have the energy to fix it? No Okay, if something happens to it Can his children do it? No Why? Because وَلَهُ ذُرِّيَّةٌ ضُعَفَا And he has children that are ضُعَفَا ضُعَفَا is the plural of ضَعِيف And ضَعِيف is someone who is weak Now why are the children weak? Either because they are very young They are minor Little children Dependent on him Or they are weak because of some illness Or lack of talent Lack of ability So basically he has become old and his children are dependent on him. He is very old. So therefore, he cannot take a risk. He cannot suffer any harm with regards to his garden. Similarly, there is a person who has done a lot of good deeds. He doesn't know how much time he has left. Especially if he is old. He doesn't know how much time he has left. And if something happens to those good deeds, maybe he doesn't have the time to make up all of them. What happens to the garden of this man? فَأَصَابَهَا إِعْصَارٌ A tornado hits it. A tornado hits the garden. إِعْصَار is from عَيْن صَادْرَ And عَصْر literally means to squeeze something. And إِعْصَار is used for a tornado, a cyclone, or a hurricane. Basically it is wind that rises upwards and violently rotates as well. So just imagine... A violent tornado hits this garden. What's going to happen to the grapevines? What's going to happen to the date palms? Destroyed. And this tornado, there isn't just wind in it. Fihi narun, in it is fire. It's a fiery tornado, just like a forest fire. So what happens to the garden? Fahtaraqat. It's burnt up. What's going to happen to the garden of this man? Can he do anything about it? Does he have time? Does he have energy? Does he have any helpers? No, he doesn't. Would any one of you like this to happen to him? Allah is asking us, Ayawaddu? Would you want this to happen to you? No, you wouldn't. Similarly, why should you do good deeds and waste them? Why should you do good deeds and waste them yourself? Because you never know when your time is going to be up. This ayah, this example, has been understood in several ways. First of all, it has been said that this example tells us about the one who spends in order to show off. Or the one who spends and follows it by man and other. And the entire sadaqah that he has given, that huge amount that he has given, that he sacrificed, all of that is vanished. It disappears. It is wasted. And he will not have it in the hereafter. Then it has also been said, and this is the opinion of Ibn Abbas anhu, that it's not just about the one who gives sadaqah, it's about the one who performs deeds of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout his life. And asabahul kibar, old age reached him. You see, this is very interesting. He has a garden, and he's become very old, and his children are very young at the same time. Why? Because sometimes when people are working, in their business, establishing their career, what do they do? They delay having a family. Isn't it? So, he has sacrificed so much to make that garden, to look after that garden, to make it successful. Similarly, a person has done so much to do good deeds. He has sacrificed. He has kept fast. He has stayed hungry. 
He has spent so much money. He has kept away from his family. But then what does he do? Towards the end of his life, shaitan comes to him and he begins to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until all of his good deeds have been consumed. All of his good deeds are wasted. And we see that in the hereafter, this is going to be the condition of some people. That they will have spent their entire lives doing something, doing good deeds, spending, obeying Allah. But they did something at the end of their life that wasted all of their deeds, that burnt all of their deeds. And in the hereafter, when they need their deeds most, they will not have them. Why? Because they followed their sadaqah with other. They followed their sadaqah with man. In his old age, when the children are dependent on him, he is in most need of his garden at that time. But he doesn't have it. Similarly, on the day of judgment, we will be in need of our good deeds. But if we have followed our good deeds with sins, with riya, with man, with other, what are we going to have left? Would any of you want this? Allah questions us. Ayawaddu. Would any of you want this? كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ Likewise does Allah explain to you the ayat. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ So that you reflect. And remember tafakkur is to reflect on the different aspects of something. So reflect on the different aspects of this example and learn a lesson for yourself. Let's listen to the recitation. أَيَوَدُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ جَنَّةٌ مِّن نَخِيلٍ وَأَعْنَابٍ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِن Riya, showing off man and other. And we will need our good deeds in the hereafter. And if we follow our good deeds in this dunya, by actions that nullify them, we are only harming ourselves. Sometimes we put in so much effort in doing something, and then we completely wash it away. We burn that good deed with the comments that we make, with the complaints that we make. So it's important to preserve the good deeds as well after performing, because we never know when our time is going to be up. And remember that this ayah, this example is not just relevant to sadaqah, but it's relevant to every good deed as well. Anything you'd like to say before we conclude? So for example, if you're giving a gift to someone, is it wrong to give that gift with the intention of making that happy? Again, if you want to make them happy, that is something good. But why do you want them to be happy? Or why are you giving that? Why are you giving that gift? The main intention should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how will you know that it's for the sake of Allah? That if she doesn't say thank you, or if she gives that gift away to someone, you don't question, you don't object. Or if she doesn't give you a gift in return, you don't object. We learn from this about the importance of niya, the importance of intention. Sometimes we don't even look at that. We just do actions mindlessly, without any intention. It's important to focus on the intention as well. Let's listen to the recitation from the beginning. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِّنْهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ نَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنَتُوبُ إِلَيْكَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته